This is the generation where women are looking for traditional old school men that show up with values, care about you, who open the door, who know how to and fix the things in their house. But what they're met with are men that are too scared of commitment and who are looking for just another hit on the internet. Where I'm not ready for a relationship means that they're really just out there looking to see if anyone else is better than you. Once they go out and they find out that literally no one else is better than you, then they come crawling back and you're like, go f*** yourself. This is the generation where people are actually encouraged to cheat when they're not happy. This is the era where relationships are actually situationships because nobody will make a commitment to anybody because everybody is too scared of everything. And everybody feels like everybody is so accessible. So you just move through relationships as if they're transactions and nothing else. And people have literally confused what self-love means. People are saying self-love is like disrespect, but like, seriously, it's just modesty. Who hurt you? I will admit it, Petty Betty showed up last night. So, um, matched with this guy named Luke, and he wanted to text instead of being on the app, and I was like, mm, not a good idea on your part, but okay. So I give him my number, he texts me, he's like, hey, this is Luke, and I immediately like, hey, don't send a D-pic, this is a work phone, I will get in trouble, and then I'm gonna have to hunt you down like Liam Nelson and take it. Like, please don't do it. He then starts laughing, and he was like, there's no possible way. I'm like, Okay. Um, so then he goes on to be like, what if what if it's a classy D pick? And then he starts asking for boob pics. And I was just like, okay, I like this is two seconds. Like we're two seconds into this. No. So I said, Lucas, you're being rude, which is his legal name, which he did not catch on to. He then responds back, ha ha ha, my mom is the only one that calls me that. I'm like, you mean Patricia? do himself i'm like you gave me your phone number i could drain your bank account at this point stay on the apps you're not kidding me fellas if you ask a lady on a date and she travels to your side of town across toll roads and sunday morning coast traffic pay for her coffee and lunch for sake fuck no don't get to the end of the date and go oh i just normally spit split the bill straight down the middle all right then split the travel the fuel and the tolls down the middle you quit twenty dollars seventy five my half came to twenty dollars seventy five i would have spent more than that in travel Pick up your game, fellas. Seriously, assess the situation. I'm not saying pay for it all the time. I'm not saying that. But seriously? $20.75? How about new? All right, everybody. So I just, I'm done being quiet about this. Let's talk about it. This relationship is not for the weak. You have to be sure that this is what you want and your partner wants and go all in. I just want to say, for the most part, I would say 95% of people are very accepting and very open and very happy for us and for the happiness that we have found with each other. But sometimes it's those that are closest to you that just don't understand. And you know what the saddest thing is for me? Is that these people don't care how happy you are. They don't care how happy we are, how much we've improved each other's life, how much we've made each other better people. All they care about is how things look. Dating in your 40s is ghetto. Just trash, trash. So, I matched with a guy on match. We had a, hey, how you doing? You know, let's exchange phone number type conversation. So I gave him my number. This was like 10 o'clock in the morning. Okay. So I'm expecting if I give you my number at 10 o'clock in the morning that you're going to call me 
at 10 o'clock in the morning or very soon after that. So, no call. So, last night about 10 o'clock, my phone rings and it's a number I don't recognize. And I answered it because I was pretty sure it was not a bill collector or somebody I, I, just in case. Just in case it was somebody I might actually need to talk to. So, I answered the phone. Hello? Hey, what's up? Not much. Who's this? Oh, this is so-and-so. Oh, hey. So, um... What are you doing? Um, sir, it is 10 o'clock at night. I, I am in the bed. Oh, I was thinking I might come through. Come through? Oh, we don't come through at this address. No, that, that's not what we do. Um, I was like, uh, no. We, I, I don't do come through. Like, no, no, sir. Uh, yeah, no. And so he was like, well, uh, uh, let me hit you back in just a minute okay sure immediately blocked immediately blocked we are grown we are not doing come throughs at 10 o'clock at night i am a grown woman who has a grown woman job i have to get up and go to work so yeah dating is trash it's the ghetto the ghetto i immediately deleted my profile i'm done can't do it anymore i say it say it well, this is a drastic improvement over what I looked like before I put the filter on. So there Keep telling yourself that, darling. There's that. I'm going to tell you a story about dating today. Dating at 40, which is a nightmare. Worse than dating at any other age, I swear, is dating at 40. Last weekend, I went out on a couple of dates, which is unusual for me. Usually, I don't stack dates like that. I went on a date on Friday night with a guy who was really sweet, but there's no potential there. He is still married separated but that's not something I want to get myself into because who knows maybe she comes back and he's like I love you and I want to make us work out so no he was really nice we had a nice time that was it haven't heard from him since I think he got the picture Saturday I went out with another guy who I had spoken to and we had planned on having um, coffee and then going to going for a walk and then getting lunch somewhere um, that's a lot for me. Usually on a first date, I like to just have something super low-key and casual so I can get out if I'm not enjoying myself. <laughs> yeah, boy. So we got coffee, took a long walk, and we went to lunch. I thought it was going really well. I thought we were hitting it off. He was making a lot of eye contact with me, seemed really interested. We were talking about things like common goals and ideals and morals. And we all seemed to be on the same page. It was working out pretty well, even though I lost my contact at lunch and had to see him basically through one eye the whole time. The next day, he called me and asked me to go out this coming Friday. So between Sunday and now, we texted maybe like once a day. He was always the one who initiated it, okay? Even just to say something dumb like, how's your coffee today or whatever, like something stupid like that. Um, and then, um, a few days ago, because a lot of you who know me know that I'm into perfume, so I was organizing my perfume, and I was like, oh, hey, by the way, what do you like to smell on a woman, right? Not even thinking anything about it, because that's not serious to me. And then, um, yesterday I cooked dinner and sent him a picture of it, and I said, maybe I'll cook it for you sometime, after he told me it looked good. You know what? You know what? Wow. He then calls me and says, this is moving way too fast. You can understand, I was seriously gobsmacked. Way too fast, we've been on one date, we've exchanged a handful of texts, every communication was pretty much initiated by him, and he's the one who kissed me after our first date, by the way. So here I am thinking to myself, like, are there any men out there who are not flakes? Honestly. Um, you know, <laughs> thinking that going on one date where you initiated the kiss and told me, I really hope we can continue this and then you continue communicating with me and then I say something about maybe making dinner for you sometime and asking you what perfume you'd like me to wear on our date and you tell me it's moving too fast. Come on, dude. Grow up. You're not ready for a relationship.